touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. What comes to mind when you hear this? And how has it been interpreted? Now I want to talk about this. Touch not my anointed, misunderstood or misused. Here's what the Bible really says. These are the things that has been interpreted when the scripture is quoted. One, this phrase is used often to emphasize respect for leaders. Two, to caution against criticizing or attacking God's anointed ones, in quotes, the leaders. But where somehow it is misused and misunderstood is the fact that most times it is used in the context of leaders who even abuse people. And then they are like, they don't want to take accountability. So touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And somehow, I'm like, who is the anointed? Because we cannot pick a scripture out of context and misuse it just for the benefit of those who want to push themselves up there. Like I am the anointed of God because I was anointed with oil. I am the angel of this house, <laughs> so to say. Oh, I'm the pastor. Touch not my anointed. And even other Christians use it. Oh, don't talk about that pastor. Even when someone needs to be called to take accountability, don't talk about him. He's the anointed of God. I'm not pushing people here to say, go and insult anybody. But it's about us being real with ourselves. This scripture was not based on talking about a leader. Let's go to the context of it. In Psalms 105 verse 15, let's start from verse 14. He permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sex, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Who are the them and the day? Who were the ones that God rebuked kings for their sake? God was not talking to a particular leader, a particular prophet. Let me go straight to this because I want you to benefit from this. I don't just want to talk about the aspect of a response to how this scripture has been misused and misunderstood and abused even. Because in that line, they will now bring up the case of Aaron, Miriam and Moses, that Moses was the anointed one and Aaron and Miriam talked against Moses, which I don't want to go into that, but that can be talked about next time. To this... God was clearly talking about the children of Israel when he said, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And this was a psalm of thanksgiving to God. David said, From the time of the Israelites when they were few, from Abraham, God chose Abraham. God made an oath with Abraham. He chose Isaac. He chose Jacob. Then the old people of Israel were chosen. They are the anointed ones. In the life of Abraham, you can testify to it when you read that even in Abraham's mistakes of him lying that Sarah was his sister instead of his wife and the king took Sarah into his house and would have abused Sarah or slept with her or married her. And God decided to go to the king and said, do not try this. You're going to die. I'm going to take your life from you. God rebuked kings for their sake. That was God literally rebuking kings for their sake, for his own child. Abraham did it again to Ahimelech. God came again to Ahimelech and rebuked him for his sake. Isaac did the same thing. God rebuked like God has been constantly helping the children of Israel. Kings and kingdoms have been falling for their sake. Now, what is this pointing out? It is pointing out the care and provision and protection of God for his people, for his own people. He is rebuking Anything that would hurt his people, anything that would harm his people, now who is the anointed? Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Let us pause there. How did God anoint Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power? Now, we that believe in Jesus have been given the Holy Spirit. So, what can we say to everybody that has the Holy Spirit? They are anointed and chosen of God. Now, the Holy Spirit is the seal of God in the life of a believer, that that believer is God's own, and that believer is anointed with that Spirit of God and with power. That's why Christ said to the disciples, Wait here till I release power to you, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, the Holy Spirit's presence in us is the anointing of God. So it's not about a literal oil that somebody has to be like, oh, go on your knees, I've anointed you to be a minister, I've anointed you to be this, to be that. That is not the anointed that God talks about here. Because so many people have been anointed with that physical oil, that literal oil, but they are not anointed of God because they are not carrying the true Spirit of God. So they can walk around with the oil 
and do things and they have charisma and they have oratory gifts and whatsoever they are sound theologically but they don't have the true spirit of god they are not anointed of god so it was not about that literal oil it's about the anointed of god of god saying for all my children he gives a command against anything that will come against you as his anointed one tells the thing the king the boss the leader touch not my anointed he tells the disease the sickness touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm he tells whatsoever would come against you the evil by day the pestilence in darkness the destruction that lays waste at noonday every evil he says don't don't be afraid I have given a command against these things touching you. It's kind of like the scripture that says, and he sent his word and he healed all their diseases. God has given disease, illness, and whatsoever thing, a command not to touch you. That is why Christ came. He was beaten so that by his stripes, you will be healed. So you can stand on the authority of God's word that anything that wants to, you know, hurt you, trouble you, harm you, Paul said, henceforth, let nothing trouble me again, for I be on my body the marks of Christ. That's the anointing of the Lord. Let no one, let nothing trouble me again. God will give kings command not to touch you. And I want you to believe it, that you are the anointed of God. Maybe whenever this scripture is quoted, all you think about is that pastor, your pastor, your minister, your GO, whoever. It is not for them. It is for all of us. All of us are the anointed. And I'm not trying to talk down on them, but based on context, this is this scripture, which is you should own this scripture, believing I am the anointed of God. I have the Holy Spirit of God. I'm walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And because of this, kings have been rebuked for my sake. Sickness has been rebuked for my sake. Diseases, illness, and whatsoever thing has been rebuked for my sake. You have to believe it. You have to own God by faith. Because he will not permit people to do you wrong. He will not permit things to happen to you. That is why scripture says, everything works together for good to those who love God and were caught according to his purpose. Because anything that happens to you, God permitted it for your good. And he does not permit anything that will not work out for your good to happen to you. I hope that this is a blessing to you. Like, I'm actually excited sharing this because looking at the life of Abraham and in, in my story of this, that's when I went back, like how God did not permit people to do him wrong. How God did not permit kings and kingdoms, the Egyptians to do the Israelites wrong. How God rescued his people throughout when they aligned with him. So what about you, the anointed of God who is saved by grace through faith and as the spirit of the Lord as a seal to mark you god cannot permit anything to do you wrong thank you for watching today's video and i pray that this video will be a blessing to you and strengthen your faith in the lord jesus christ and then you'll come up with this level of boldness of knowing i am the anointed of god i am aware if you do not subscribe to this channel you know what to do <laughs> subscribe right now and share this video to other people and then don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about today's video. Thank you and God bless you.